Hey guys, welcome back to another shader tutorial. Today we are looking at this little cube down here. It is going to be a see-through object. Just like you see in some FPS game when you want to make sure that you always render your object uh, no matter what happens. So we're going to be playing around with multiple paths. We're going to be writing two paths for this object and also make sure that one of them is also um, always being written to the Z buffer. This way we always know where the object is no matter what. Alright, so as always, I am going to first get rid of the code I already had for this and we're going to be creating a new material and also a new shader. Let's call it something like always visible. So material is going to be always visible and the shader, same exact name, unlit shader, always visible. Let's open up the shader and change the, the name at the very top. So I'll be using N3K, always visible. We can then go back in the game, find our material, and then change the shader of that material to the one we just created, just like this. Alright, so here it is, that is our very first object. By default, as always, it is the unlit diffuse, so you can put a texture on it and have this kind of result. Okay, so let's get started right away, we're going to open this thing up and look at the parameters we need. The first parameter we need is the main texture, we're going to be rendering our texture anyway, and the second one I'd like to use is the color. So let's go with the... Um, now the second property could be something like color. And I'll be using this as um, see through color or... Let's just call it always visible color. If I can type. It is of type color. And the default value is going to be 0, 0, uh, 4 times basically. So we have a vector 4 filled with 0. That should give you a nice white color. Okay, so here it is, we have the always visible color, it's on white right now. Now let's go in our passes and start writing some good stuff. Alright, so right away we are going to run into the tags, and now the tags, I told you about the render type, that is the order in which you're rendering. Uh, you can also use Q, this one is a little bit more understandable for me, so like you're, you're deciding uh, in which order you are rendering your object. Our object is going to be rendered in the transparent. And those are all the keywords you have to know by heart, or you can look them up on the uh, on the wiki. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we don't want the solid object to be in front of, um, basically, our cube. Our cube has to be in front of everything, so it's being rendered like it has transparency. And rendering, like when you render um, transparent object, they're being done after the solid object. Now, let's go ahead and write our very first pass. Our very first pass is um, super easy. You know, I think we already have it working if we clean it up a little bit. Make fog work, I'm not going to be using this. Uh, include Unity CG, yep, sure, we'll use that. Vertex UV, that's fine. I'm going to get rid of this fog. And the rest seems to be just fine. So basically, we're just positioning the vertex and we're rendering the, um, the texture color, which give you this behavior right here. This is a pass we don't want to miss. This is a pass that we have to do. Now, what we'd like to do is have the exact same result, but instead of having the uh, the sampled color, as you can tell right here, we just want to put a fixed color. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to create another pass, and now this one I'll do it before. And you'll understand why I do it before, and I'll actually show you the result if we do it after, um, just once we're done completing it. So let's go ahead and start writing down this second pass. I'm going to be putting that right here, copying a little bit from the other one, we need all of this, let's also end the CG. So just like a normal pass, we're going to be using these as well. Let's put them here. And just fix the IntelliSense, not the IntelliSense, the, uh, the spacing, just a little bit. Now as far as these two are concerned, um, for the app data, the vertex position, we do need that. We need to actually know where we're going to be rendering our object. And the UV, we actually don't, because we don't actually need to sample from the texture. So I'll be removing UV from both the app data and the vertex to frag. Uh, we also need the position right here. So they're a little bit more light. Now let's get and go grab our vertex and frag shader. I'm going to be pasting them right in here. And now there's going to be some error, of course, because we're not using the UV. So let's get rid of this. We still need to position our vertex in the world, so that is fine. Now transfer fog, not using this, I'm actually going to get rid of it down there as well. 
And that's all we need to do right here. So in our vertex shader for that um, overlay pass, we need to position it, that's fine. And then as far as the, uh, the pixel shader goes, we don't need to render from the texture. All we need to do actually is to return a fixed color. Now our color, we have it in the properties. Let's just, let's just go at the top here. That's color, I'm gonna paste it down here. Now, if you guys remember, every time you use a property in those shader like this, you have to declare it right in between. So let's go, let's go right here and say float for color. Float for because it is a vector four. Now, if we have a look at this, let's just go in the game, see what happens. Now, nothing really happens in here, and that is because we are basically just running two paths, and the first pass is, is rendering the cube all white, or, you know, all of that color right here, but then right after, we're rendering the texture on top of it in the second pass. Now, let's go have a look right here, see what happens if we actually swap them around. So, I'll be taking all of this, that's my first pass, and that is the second one down there. And I'll just be moving it using Alt, like this. Super lazy stuff, but hey, that's gonna work out. So pass number one is here, and pass number two is there. They're a little bit hard to see right there, but let's have a look at uh, what the result we get in the game. So the second pass just made sure everything is set to white. <laughs> so by having a look at this, you can tell that the order of the pass do matter. Now I'm just going to be putting this one back up to where it was before and we'll keep on going. Alright, so now we're back with this. The first pass is the one that renders the white color and the second pass is the one that does the normal render. You're going to be able to tell really really soon why we put them in that order. Now to create the effect we want, we have to play around with the Z buffer a little bit. So if we just head at the top right here, you have to be above the CG program, but inside of the pass, we're going to start writing down some stuff. Now here is the keyword we're going to be entering in our overlay pass. We're going to say cool off. What this is going to do, it's actually going to make sure that we render both sides of the face in. I had actually forgot to put a capital O right here. Now this keyword can only accept three parameters, either front, like this, back, or off. We're going to be using the off keyword, but let me explain what the other do. Basically, by default, everything is on cooling front, which means that if we have a cube like this, I can only see the three faces in front of me right now. So technically, you don't have to render the one in the back, and that's exactly what happens right here. So when I'm looking at this cube, um, assuming that assuming that my cooling was on front, like this, I would not be able to tell, but the back face are not being rendered. So the object like, in the back right here, this face, is not being rendered, the one at the bottom is not being rendered, and also this one is not being rendered. So that is the very first keyword. Let's move on to the second one. The second one is actually Z right, and we have to set it to off. So Z right, off. I don't really have much information about this one, this one is quite hard for me to explain, so I'll just put the documentation from Unity right here. Uh, it basically says, controls whether a pixel from this object are written to the depth buffer, default is on. If you're, draw if you're drawing, okay, if you're drawing solid object, you have to leave this on. If you're drawing semi-transparent object, you gotta switch the Z right to off. Basically, we wanna make sure everything is set on, uh, well, it's actually set for transparent object because we're trying to render something in front of everything else. And also, they have a mistake in their documentation. Amazing. So Z right is on off since we're trying to render on top of everything. And finally, we have to do a Z test always. This way, we're always testing for uh, this Z buffer to be written to. If we head back here, here we go. Our effect is actually achieved just like that. And now we have an object that is uh, that we're able to see through. Basically, not see through. Well. It's always visible is what I'm trying to say. I still don't know what this effect is called after all this time. But that's actually it guys, that's actually all we had to do today. Um, we wrote two passes for the very first time, so that's something new, that's something quite cool we can be using in the past. So we also played a little bit around with the Z buffer. Hopefully we can play with it a lot more in the future because this is going to help us achieve uh, better effects and also some really funky stuff. So. 
that's all for today guys thank you so much for watching check out the patreon page the discord the discord is actually being very active super nice all the links i've mentioned are down there in the description down below and also this water is something i've brought on the asset store for a really cheap really cheap sum so if you want to get this water for like seven bucks you can go get it it's not mine i'm not actually affiliated with the the guy that made it i just think that it looks good so i brought it and that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one